Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, welcome back to this second lecture for Chapter 2. And in this lecture, I want to talk about the dot product and the cross product of a vector in the Cartesian coordinate system that I developed in the previous lecture. Okay, so we start with a dot or scalar product in coordinates. So we take two vectors, A and B and represent them in the ij coordinates, ijk coordinate system in this way. So the dot product is very simple. It's just the sum, the product, of the respective components of each vector. So the components in i, a1, b1, components in j, a2, b2, and components in k, a3, b3. Add it up. How do you prove this? Well, you just take the dot product of A and B as defined here and use the distributive property of the dot product that I discussed in the exercises at the end of the previous chapter. Now, if you take this definition and you substitute for B A, you can easily see that A dot A is the square root of the length of the vector. So a dot a is a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared. That's the square root of the magnitude. So we can express the magnitude of a vector in terms of the dot product in this way. And that's going to be very useful. So the vector or cross product in coordinates, that's a little more involved, but not much. So remember that i, j, and k are unit vectors, and they are mutually orthogonal. So the other way of represent, well, we haven't quite got to that, but so any vector, the, cro is the cross product of any vector with itself is zero. Okay, so that's this point to keep in mind here. Now we want to, cr to compute the uh, mutual cross products. Remember i dot j, j dot k, k dot i were all zero because they're all perpendicular. Now it's a little bit different. So what is, we use just the definition of cross product. Cross product of i and j, for example, is a length of i times a length of j, and those are both one, times the sine of the angle between them, pi over two, that's one. Okay, now here's the key point multiplied by a vector that's perpendicular to the plane defined by i and j, perpendicular to i and j. We call that n in the definition. And remember, I required i, j, k to define a right-handed coordinate system. So i cross j is k. Now, reasoning in this way, it is not hard to see that i cross j is k, j cross k is i, k cross i is j. You cycle through them. But also, you can also at the same time easily verify from the definition that j cross i is minus k, k cross j is minus i, and i cross k is minus j. The vector perpendicular to that in the right-hand sense is the opposite direction. Armed with these facts about the cross products of the vectors i, j, and k, we implicitly use those when we computed the dot product. We're going to take a and b represented in the i, j, k coordinate system and compute the cross product. And here we're going to use something that I haven't uh, discussed in detail yet. It's, again, it's in the exercises at the end of this chapter. But we have a distributive property for cross products. 
and if we distribute that about in this way, it's, it's just keep things straight, work through this definition using what you're familiar with with usual multiplication for the distributed property. It's the same thing for vector products, both dot and cross. And the key thing is to use the meaning for i cross i and j cross um, k cross i, etc., etc., that we've already developed when you get it down to this point. And you can see that the cross product is a vector, the dot product is a scalar, but the components have this very interesting form. And there's a symmetry in this form that we're going to come back to and learn more about as we go through the course. Now there is a handy mnemonic device for remembering how to do the cross product. I mean, this is a long calculation. For specific vectors, it's not so bad. But you get used to this and you see the pattern. But here, this is not really a determinant. It's a, that's why I call it a mnemonic. For, for A and B defined as above, we put I, J, K across the top. A comes first, components of A in the second row. B is second, components of B in the second row. And then just compute the minors of this determinant. So the I minor is A2B3 minus A, A3B2, and that's exactly the component. Okay. And the J, the middle minor, is A1B3 minus B1A3, but there's a minus sign because these alternate, so that's what you get for the next one. And the final one is straightforward. For K, it's A1B2 minus A2B1. Okay, that's a handy mnemonic for remembering the cross product of two vectors in three dimensions through the three um, pattern of how you compute a determinant of a three by three matrix, but this isn't a three by three matrix. Okay, that's enough for now. We're going to use these ideas as we go more and more into kinematics. The dot product and the cross product are going to be fundamental tools for us in expressing mechanical properties. And uh, next time I will pick up with more kinematics, derivatives and integrals of vectors. So until next time, bye.